Hello, and welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Today is the uh, October 3rd, and this is the EU-US edition. Uh, I'm, today we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Verochton. Mark won't be joining us today. He's got another uh, commitment going on right now, so we'll continue on without him. And uh, maybe we'll get lucky he shows up before the end, but no worries if he doesn't. Uh, so on the agenda today, I've got some contributor spotlight notes that I'd like to share. Uh, some announcements and information regarding Hacktoberfest. Uh, just one, um, I, would I would have had more blog posts, but they all kind of got their own little section here. So uh, the only blog post that we have of note is about the brownout. Some more information about Jenkins elections. Uh, the weekly and uh, LTS release from this week. Uh, the next LTS baseline as well. Uh, Google, Google Summer of Code wrapping up. And then lastly, just uh, uh, just some discussion I'd like to start around the Java 11 part of documentation and what we should be doing with that um, come the end of October. Uh, any other topics that you want to put on the agenda for today, Bruno? No, thank you, Kevin. Okay, great. Uh, so then starting off, so for the contributor spotlight, so right now we've got Chevet Lamba up there. Um, thanks to Chevet, they've uh, they were originally a Google Summer of Code participant and mentor. Uh, they come back and they're continuing to uh, make some really great contributions and part of the project. So thank you to them. Uh, next up is going to be Adrian the Sharpine TA. So uh, really looking forward to that one. Um, I've submitted the pull request. Adrian's given his review and blessing for that. So uh, that's scheduled to be published this coming week. So uh, Adrian will be up and then uh, I've been going through interviews with some other contributors that we'll be spotlighting in the future. So we've got uh, enough right now to publish through November and into December. I don't know if we'll have another one. Well, we probably will be able to get another one for December. So we should be good through the end of the year at this point. Um, I'll be doing interviews with uh, a handful of folks over the course of the month. Uh, I just did two yesterday uh, with some folks and then I have another one scheduled and another one scheduled towards the end of the month. So uh, looking forward to that and really happy with the uh, participation and uh, willingness of the contributors to be highlighted. Uh, it's a lot to be putting yourself out there like that. Yeah, so. uh, that's not an easy exercise uh, indeed. Uh, but if you're watching the video, um, don't be shy. If you ever think of a contributor you would like to see a spotlight for, just let us know and we will see if we can approach this contributor and get some information about his bio, his background, and so on. This has been really cool to see, I would say, because we often see people through their code, their contributions, but people are not their code. And we like to know more about them, their background, their bio, where, when they started contributing, why, and what they are doing when they are not pushing some code to the Jenkins project. That has been a, a, a delight for me, and frankly, I can't wait uh, to see all the contributor spotlight. Thank you for all the work, Kevin. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm happy to do it, and I'm happy to be able to interact with everyone and get to know these people a lot better. Um, it's been really fun kind of getting the background of some folks and learning what they're into and learning um, what they do in their non-Jenkins allotted time, so that's been really fun. Uh, you know, uh, Adrian, uh, I we work with a little bit closer, so... Uh, we get to interact a little bit more, but, um, you know, I, I don't know his full background. So learning that's been really great. Um, and it, ultimately, this is a, the opportunity for people to share who they are and what they want to share. And some contributors are more focused on Jenkins and their contributions and that part of it. So uh, some folks are just going to be a lot more uh, code and Jenkins focused than some others will be. And that's OK, too. Like, um, this has been an exercise in understanding and uh, comfort, like making people comfortable with what we're doing because um, I think appreciation and thanks while are integral to this, it's not necessarily something that's at the forefront of developers or um, just folks in general when they're working in an open source project. Like, yes, certain people are very appreciative and the community as a whole probably is very big uh, very happy about what folks are contributing and what they're doing, but um, that thanks doesn't necessarily get thrown out there. And so it, it can feel, it might feel a little awkward for some folks to, you know, put themselves out there in this way. And 
Um, I just want to say I appreciate them taking that chance and taking and like taking on that awkwardness, if that's the word for it. And, but um, yeah, it's yeah. it's been really great to see and um, kind of meeting people that I would not have necessarily met directly otherwise. So you're right. It made us. It made me feel uh, closer uh, to these contributors because most of the time, the only thing we see from people is their code. And knowing, for example, okay, spoiler alert. Um, for example, Adrian is about is uh, working with wood. He's a woodworker, not by trade, but uh, as a hobbyist. And mm -hmm. that's interesting. That's something I didn't know uh, before. And now, when I see a PR from a, a contributor and that I know the story of, it makes not only think of their code but also of their background, what they like, and so on. And I'm more prone to talk to them about what they like and. For me, that's a kind of a bond for the community, you know, knowing each other on a different level helps us with forming, I wouldn't say a family, that would be plenty wrong, but uh, a real community with people interacting, not just because of the code, but also because of the project. And also because we have another kind of links uh, between all of us. And I find that really, really cool. Uh, we don't have that in all the open source communities. and. That's something I like about the Jenkins community. We tried a few things in order to get uh, contributors uh, recognized for their efforts, involvement, and so on. And this one, the Contributor Spotlight, is a major um, plus. It's a nice initiative to get to know more contributors and to get their work um, seen. We are still thinking, you are part of that. We're still thinking on how to get our contributors feel part of something that is bigger than them, uh, part um, also of something that is rewarding in a way or another. Uh, so we have this contributor spotlight. We have the random thank yous. Uh, and I hope we will find some of the ideas because we have a funnel. We know that we have 600 something contributors and then it gets tighter and we have maybe 30 something. Uh, major contributors, and we want them to feel at ease, at home, welcome, part of something. And this initiative is just perfect for that. End of my rambling. Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Bruno. I appreciate that. And I think it's, you're saying a lot of what I think we're getting back from it. And I, I, maybe I feel similarly about a lot of that stuff. So, um, and I think, and you know, my last two cents on it is, um, my favorite part has been finding out everyone's advice because uh, one of the prompts is advice for new com new contributors or developers or members of open source community. And it's it's just kind of interesting and, and a little funny uh, to see how similar everyone's advice is because um, I think it's just exposing a lot of universal truths about open source and about contributing to a project like this that there is no such thing as a small contribution in terms of impact. It might be small in terms of how many lines you update or what you might be doing, but it doesn't mean it's a small contribution. Um, knowing the history, understanding what you're getting into, not being afraid to ask questions. Like these are all really solid pieces of advice that uh, I was given when I was getting started in the project with and with open source a couple of years ago. And I'm sure others have, I mean, they wouldn't be giving this advice if they didn't want it or get it themselves. So yeah, it's just neat little breadcrumbs that are being kind of strewn about uh, through all the different spotlights. Cool. Uh, so thank you very much, Bruno. Again, appreciate your insights. And yeah, thanks to everyone for their contributor spotlight participation. Uh, next up, so Hacktoberfest is now officially underway. It's October 3rd. So uh, we are in Hacktoberfest. Um, we had a blog post announcement just the other day. Uh, thanks to Mark announcing that it's that it's happening, uh, and so uh, you can find out more about Hacktoberfest and some guidelines here, and some places that you can get started. Uh, we have a good first issues list in the Jenkins GitHub repo, so you can always check that out. Uh, and then um, this is something that you uh, that you uh, Darren, Mark, and Bruno have all been working on and refining a lot more, um, as well as Chris Stern who is always present uh, regardless if I see them or not. Um, and yeah, so it's been going really well. Um, we have the updated Hacktoberfest page as well since we're now in the 11th year. And uh, 
yeah, if you're curious, look for a Hacktoberfest label on the repository. Uh, there's the good first issues for Jenkins.io. There's uh, and then other repositories will also have the Hacktoberfest label applied to it, so that you know whether or not you can work on it, or whether or not maintainers are accepting Hacktoberfest pull requests and uh, imp and suggestions, improvements, what have you. So, yeah, this where we were pretty radical. I don't know if you saw that, but Darren wrote to the mailing list saying that he would like to get all the repositories from the Jenkins project by default, remove the Hacktoberfest um, label. So, because the risk was that anybody wanting to participate in Hacktoberfest that helped Jenkins would chime in, uh, propose something in a GitHub repo in the Jenkins uh, CI organization, and then their pull request would never get reviewed because the maintainers were busy with something else. So we had to be sure that this does not happen this year. So by default, I think every Jenkins CI repo got the Hacktoberfest label removed so that if ever you participate in a Jenkins uh, CI Hacktoberfest, you will be sure that the maintainers are ready to review your PR. So your work won't be lost and you will have the badge from Hacktoberfest if your PR gets merged. That's pretty cool. And I was surprised. I didn't do it on purpose, but I got my first PR merge for Hacktoberfest. Yeah, I didn't do it for Hacktoberfest. I had to do it, so I did it. And it's still working for me, you know? It's still a joy to see, oh, you got your first PR merge and you have only three more to get the, your Hacktoberfest badge. Yeah, maybe I will do that. And... Um, so please, if you have any idea, go ahead and try to um, file a PR, read the issues. And I think we also have a Jira page, right, uh, Kevin? That yes. lists all the, um, yeah. I don't have the link right here. Neither do I. I think but... this is, actually, this is it right here. Yeah. Let me log in. I'm a bad person. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, we're just not going to do that part. But yeah, yeah whatever you can put the, the links, link. yeah, in the docs later on. Yep. Yeah, there. Um, yeah, let me just get that. Sorry. So it should be pretty easy for anyone to find an issue to try and solve. In your view. Yeah. Uh, da -da -da. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's. Um, they're there for a reason. These are all issues that are beneficial to the project, of course, but more so and more importantly, the contributor themselves. These are things that have been painstakingly reviewed and refined. We had um, triple what we got down to, I want to say, because I think it was at 100 and something, and now it's been moved down to about 50, um, just to ensure that the 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 experience is there for the contributors of Hacktoberfest, the participants, because before... You know, uh, we don't want anyone submitting a pull request to a repository that's not going to get a response or to a plugin that the maintainer has it left it up for adoption or, you know, any number of things that would create a less than desirable experience that like Bruno, Mark and Darren have gone through and ref like made it so that that's a less than likely opportunity to have. Um, so thank you for doing all that work. Uh, it's mostly Darren and Bezel helped, by the way, because he's an admin of all these repos and can do like things like put a label, label or remove a label. Um, the years, a few years ago, the incentive was a t-shirt and I was uh, wearing my last uh, Act of t-shirt yesterday. Uh, <laughs> uh, just an anecdote. But uh, later on, it was uh, planting trees, I think. And these days, I don't know if they still plant trees if you make your for pull request, but you have a badge that you can display on LinkedIn, for example. You've got something to, to show off. But um, I would say the main incentive is not there. It's um, a project that will help you dip your toes into the waters of open source if you never experience how it is to work with an open source project. And also, if ever you're thinking about participating in the Jenkins Glow Summer of Code next year, it will help you build your Jenkins muscles. So that's a very interesting first experience, I would say. And it doesn't cost anything. You even don't have to do up to the four. 
uh, pull request. Just give it a try and yeah, just build some muscles. Maybe you will like it. Maybe you won't like it. Maybe you will love the community, but not the project. Just give it a try and you will see if you're a good fit for the Jenkins project or if the Jenkins project is a good fit for you. Great point, Bruno. And I, I like that, you know, you can uh, kind of bringing it into the Google Summer of Code because Google Summer of Code is a real commitment. You have to uh, apply and write up a plan and have uh, a lot more brought into it than just walking up to the door and knocking like you would with Hacktoberfest. Um, so I, it's a really low risk and low uh, intensity, like it's not as intense of a ask or a task. And you can find, you can even find things that maybe aren't in that list of topics or a list of issues that you like. If someone were to submit a drink, uh, a pull request to the site for documentation help, and I didn't think of it first, like that's a great idea. Yes, let's try it. And that's a really low impact, low, you know, low, not low effort, but, um, it's a lot less intensive than trying to update or write some code for something where it's a little bit more introduct, even more introductory. So that's a great yeah. opportunity as well. As you said, it's very low risk because uh, if ever you were to start with GSOC and after writing your proposal, you realize that you don't have the right set of skills or you don't like the way the community works. Oh, damn it. It's too late uh, maybe to change project. So start now so that you know uh, if your interest and the Jenkins project in service match. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, it's a great, it's a great call out. Thank you. Uh, and then the last note on Hacktoberfest is that Darren's going to be doing some videos throughout the month uh, on different topics. So stuff like uh, extending the improve a plugin tutorial, stuff, um, different aspects of maintaining a plugin. So uh, these are going to be coming out in the month um, and more to come on that. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more posts and information related to that when uh, we have it available. So keep an eye out for more information and welcome to Hacktoberfest. Uh, next up is just uh, the one blog post that we have separate from all the others. Um, there was another brownout at the end of September. So this is again in regards to the migration of updates.jenkins.io. Um, so ideally we're, no one's going to experience any issues while the brownouts occur, but if there are issues, that's a great way for us to find out what is going on, how to address that, and to make sure that it gets taken care of before that migration happens. So, uh, thanks to Damian, Stefan, and the rest of the Infra team for their work on this. Uh, they've been really all hands on deck monitoring these and making sure that these brownouts happen, um, properly and safely. Uh, more than anything else. So uh, once that is, once they've gotten to a point where they're happy with the results, uh, then the migration of updates.jenkins.io will take on full. Uh, next up is the Jenkins elections. So uh, this is the other blog post that we've had in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so voter registration's been open. Mark wrote up a blog post for voter registration. Uh, so you, this has all the instructions and information about b registering to vote for the 2024 Jenkins elections. Uh, you have this big register button here, so you can register directly from this. Uh, it'll bring you to the community site where you can then join the election voter group. Uh, joining the group is the only way that you would be eligible to vote. If you do not join the group, you will not receive an invitation to participate. Uh, there's a join button that would typically have uh, appear right here. I've already joined, so it doesn't show here. Um, but we are looking for everyone to sign up and uh, participate as much as we can. Um, this also has some information about the nominees for the positions and uh, different ways that you can contribute. Um, ideally, you would have contributed before this point so that you can join and uh, participate. But um, there, and there's also some key dates and some timeline stuff here. Uh, and then and in addition to that, Mark's also uh, provided the candidate statements. Um, so over the last couple of years, we haven't necessarily had uh, a lot of uh, need to vote because we didn't have open positions or we only had one nominee for each position. Um, this year is very different. We have three board member positions open, so we have six candidates for that. And then uh, both Alex Earl and Tim Jacob have put their names in the hat for a release officer. Uh, and so 
we've got candidate statements from all of those candidates, um, both the board and the officer. Again, the other officers at this time are uh, the other officers, Alyssa, Damian, myself, and Wadek were with only people there. So um, you don't have to, we're not going to have statements here. You get to hear me talk every week, every other week anyway. So that's enough. Oh, but God. <laughs> that's more than enough. But uh, we're really happy to have the candidates and the application here. Uh, all of these individuals are really, really great. Uh, as both part of the project and collaborators on all of the needs of the project. Their statements showcase where they want to take the project and what they want to bring to the project. It's an excellent read. Once again, there's a register here button so that you can join the voting group and put your uh, make your voice heard for one of the candidates or, or these candidates. And uh, yeah, the voting, so voter registration is open till October 31st, so the end of the month. Um, I've also included here some just some light instructions on how to get involved. You can join the group here. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, I've included a link to the election committee, which uh, this year is Mark and Basil Crow. Uh, if you have any questions, concerns, you can reach out to them directly through that and get your questions answered. Um, outside of that, uh, the candidate statements also have their contrib their respective contributor spotlight if they've got one already. Um, you can check out more of their contributions and their uh, favorite and blog posts, et cetera, from all of those. So uh, definitely take some time, read over, review, see who you might be voting for, and uh, remember to register more than anything else. Uh, so this week we had weekly 2.479, and uh, the LTS release for 2.462.3 came out. Uh, they were released as uh, security releases. So there was a security advisory tied to those releases. Um, thank you very much to the Jenkins security team for handling the change logs uh, and releases for those. Uh, and everything is available. Uh, also, thanks to Darren Pope for pointing out one of the in uh, inconsistencies in the upgrade guide. I was able to partner uh, with Alan, uh, I think it's pronounced Berdewitz, about that and get that updated. Sorry for butchering it if I did. Um, but yeah, so the releases came out pretty good. Uh, they included, again, the security advisory is attached to it. Uh, and that's important because for the next LTS baseline, good transition, uh, we were looking at 2.477 originally, but with 2.478 not having notable changes and 2.479 having the security advisory and the security fixes tied to it, uh, Daniel Beck suggested, hey, why don't we use 2.479 as the baseline instead? Um, so that's really great as an idea because A, uh, it's only two releases past where we were originally discussing, which was 2.477. But more importantly, it include it would include all the security stuff that would have to be backported anyway. So we're covering all our bases. We're making sure that all the latest updates are included. And uh, based on the feedback we've been receiving for the last couple of weekly lines, there hasn't been much issue. So this is a good, comfortable place for us to be. So right now, the discussion that's being had is 2.479.1 will be the LTS release for the end of October. Um, Mark Waits, the release lead on that. So uh, he's helming that. He'll be uh, monitoring and taking the lead on the release candidate, everything else. So uh, he'll have more information as we go along. I'm working on the change log and upgrade guide as we speak. And this is a really big deal. Uh, the releases, I should say, uh, because it's going to be the first LTS release that requires Java 17. It's also going to be the first LTS release that includes the migration and upgrade to Spring Security 6 and Spring Framework 6, as well as going from Jakarta EE8 to Jakarta EE9. Uh, these are all really big deals in the back end. Um, Java 17 is going to is now the baseline requirement for Java for Jenkins going forward. So uh, this is us pushing forward into the future. Um, but we do need to make sure that these are all documented, that these are all highlighted, and that we have the correct instructions available for anyone, whether it's in the de documentation itself, in the upgrade guide, or making sure that we include notes in the change log so that people can access this information as needed. Um, and Basil Crow wrote up a really nice blog post earlier this summer uh, 
highlighting the Java 17 requirement that came out with the weekly release line that it came out in. I forget what that is right now, but uh, we'll probably include that too, because again, it's just got great information and information instructions on how to do the upgrade, which is crucial. Uh, next up on the agenda, actually, before I move on, Bruno, any notes or comments on the releases that we've got coming up and going on? No, uh, as you mentioned, it's key that the documentation is up to date and that will help people know what to do. Um, I already saw a few questions on community.jenkins.io for people that were having problems with the migration, not to the LTS, of course, but to the weekly because of uh, JDK 17. And despite the well-written documentation, we know that we will have some questions on community Jenkins IO on Gitter and so on. But I think we'll be ready to answer those questions as we will have the uh, some blog posts uh, ready and the official documentation also ready for these questions. So fingers crossed, I think all should go fine. And um, if you're not confident, well, it's panic time. Uh, no, just kidding. Of course, everything will go fine with JDK 17 and Spring Security 6. Yeah, no, I... The, the weekly releases have been going really well for the last few weeks with this all being part of it. I mean, this has been part of it since 2.475, I want to say. So we are now, uh, we're going to be on our, this is like our fourth week after the fact. So for a month, everything's been going really well with the releases. And yeah, but yeah we haven't had too many complaints or issues as far as I'm aware. So things are looking good. And I feel like documentation is not everyone else's life like it is mine so i understand where they might not have looked at it or maybe they just didn't think of think to but if as long as we have that documentation available we can always point it to point them to it yeah. and share that with them and uh provide answers and responses because again documentation is my life not anyone else's so uh i understand that there might be some misses in that sense but yeah, the best thing we can do is just make sure that we're embracing the community and whatever questions or concerns they have and address them as best we can. And that's what we're already doing. So we'll just keep doing that. All right. And finally, so the last couple of topics here, Google Summer of Code 2024 is, has wrapped up at this point. All the projects have finished. Huge, huge thanks to all of the participants, all of the contributors, all of the mentors, the org admins, everyone that uh, worked on Google Summer of Code 2024 to help make it as successful as always um, on to next year. Uh, Google Summer of Code never ends, even though it sounds like it might. Um, but uh, it's it's important that this project continues. This has been great in terms of uh, injecting new life into the project, getting new eyes and participants into the project, and working on stuff that might not be worked on otherwise. Um, yeah. so this is great. Um, yeah, uh, Bruno, I, you're a lot closer to Google Summer of Code than I am. Uh, any thoughts, things that you'd like to share or, um, yeah, it's a good thing for, uh, new contributors, uh, to enter the Jenkins project because you have a dedicated team of uh, mentors, uh, who spend time with you to um, onboard you to the Jenkins project. So you get to know more about how an open source project works as a mentee. You have experienced engineers to help you. Um, if you don't have the technical skills, you know, some of skills missing, uh, you can get the skills along the way. So that's pretty cool. And um, it's also very useful for the Jenkins project itself. You uh, wrote, Mark Waite is deeply grateful for StatJenkins.io. I am too. Whenever I have a presentation to make, I can find the right data in the new stat.jenkins.io and just copy and paste into my presentation. If you have a doubt or if you want to know how things are going, you have now some comparative uh, graphics so you know you know the number of Jenkins uh, controller installation versus the number of plugins or whatever makes sense to you you can find the information on stat.jenkins so it's already usable and that's a blessing for the Jenkins project we also have the RPU two projects for uh, GSOC this year and if you are a plugin maintainer uh, that will make your life easier um, we also have the um, uh, Open rewrite based uh, plugin modernizer tool. It's not yet fully deployed on the Jenkins infra, 
but it's already helping us uh, getting plugins up to date with uh, JDK 21. And uh, the last one was an experimental one, building a large language model to help answer basic questions about uh, Jenkins. The project is there, the source code is available, the model, the binaries are also available. You can run it on your machine, you can run it on Gitpod, for example, you can run it on uh, a Ging face, but it's not yet part of the Jenkins infra. It's not hosted by Jenkins itself, maybe one day. That was just a try that could help newcomers answering basic questions. But the five projects have proven being useful in a way or another for experienced Jenkins contributors, for maintainers, for newcomers. Frankly, uh, we are really grateful to be part of the GSOC project each year. And most of the projects are useful on a daily basis. So thank you to all the people who contributed, you know, where and at all. Well said. Thank you very much, Bruno. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, the stats.jenkins.io, I just threw it in there. It's up and running. You can see it here. Um, and you can get an idea of what we're looking at over time. I mean, this is from the beginning of time for Jenkins until now. Um, you can do how, whatever you want with it, but this is great. And, um, much, much better than, uh, I think there was a previous alternative to that, but it, yes, yeah, it was CSV and, uh, SVG. So these were usable, but you had to change things in a way or another. It was not just a copy and paste thing. It was difficult to use. Frankly, we were happy with that until we discovered this version that's groundbreaking. And just like how much information you get, the data sets, the re the ren rendering of it, um, this is all much, much more dynamic as well. So you get the ability to really dig deeper into stats if you are interested. Um, you know, as part of the project, you might be more interested in how, you know, the plugin you create is doing. How many installations are you getting over time? You can now dig in and find that information um, and get that kind of validation of, okay, I, it's, it's gaining traction here. Let me make sure that I'm maintaining it. Or, uh, you know, the, it, there's so many aspects to it more than that, that I'm even recognizing right now. So it's, it's very much an iceberg thing. See, uh, so definitely check it out uh, again. Thanks to everyone for their work on all of the projects and just keep it up. Hopefully, um, hopefully we see them back sooner than later for mentorships. And then, uh, so the last thing on the agenda, I know we're past time right now, but just to start the discussion now and we'll continue it weeks coming, um, just should something I was talking about with Marx, should the upgrading to Java 11 documentation be present in Jenkins.io after the end of October? Um, and the only reason I bring it up is because if we're going to start requiring 17, Java 17, we should make sure that people are upgrading to it. Uh, we will still be supporting older LTS lines at that time still. So if someone isn't ready for the most recent LTS, then they can continue to use an older version, but eventually they're going to have to upgrade anyway. Um, also upgrading to Java 17 wouldn't be any sort of detriment or negative. Uh, and you can make a jump from eight to 17 if you need to make a jump that large. So uh, for me, it makes sense to remove it, but I'm also trying to be conscious of the cases where it might not make sense for someone to upgrade, as upsetting as that might be. Yeah, uh, the, the um, current documentation covers the uh, jump from JDK 8 to JDK 17 already. Uh, so there's not a specific piece of documentation that covers upgrading from Java 8 to Java 17. Uh, we have Java 8 to Java 11 upgrading and then upgrading from Java 11 to Java 17. Okay. So the process would ideally be the same, if not extremely similar. I think it's more, my concern is what changes might that mean for someone upgrading all the way from 8 to 17? Um, mm -hmm. Because it's a, it's a big jump, even if the end result would be better. And we've been supporting Java 17 for some time now. So um, it's not like they couldn't have used it already. But yeah, I, I guess 
I'm not fully, I, I keep thinking of, oh gosh, there's an edge case where someone's not going to be able to do that upgrade right away and they're going to need this for some reason. And, and that that one case is what I'm worried about compared to everyone else who's upgrading and uh, moving along nicely. So yeah, again, it, it's something we can discuss further in like the coming weeks um, with the, the October baseline now, I think 27 days away. Uh, ooh, that's scary. Um, <laughs> talk about Halloween. Uh, but yeah, just things that, yeah, I, I think it's something that I need to get more feedback from others about, uh, because I want to be overly cautious, but if there's no need for that, then I don't want to be weighted down. I don't want the documentation to be weighted down with unnecessary information or even worse, confusing people to think that that would be ideal. And then they go to use the next LTS and they're, it's broken or something's not working. So. Yeah, just things to consider. Uh, cool. So we've gotten through the agenda. Do you have any other topics or ideas or anything you want to throw out there, Bruno? Or are you good? No, thank you, Kevin. I already talked too much. That's okay. I understand. Me too. Okay, then. Well, thanks to everyone for joining. Uh, the recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. We'll post. I'll be posting it on community.jenkins.io as well. So, uh, and, we'll, and it'll be available on YouTube. So, fun. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, again, thank you as uh, always for joining us. Uh, we'll see you in two weeks' time. Take care. All right.